Hey guys, so today we're going to look into creating a simple raycast or something which will allow us to do sort of interaction with specifically a sort of first person camera. Now a lot of first person games when you interact with something and you want to sort of pick it up and look directly at it, it'll be often using a raycast or it sends out a ray in front of the camera and it allows you to do interaction with things because it'll fire that ray if it hits a collision then we'll be able to detect that collision and go yeah we can do something with that object now. So that's what we're going to try and do. So this could be a continuation of my C Sharp series, but it's something that is really beneficial to know and really quite easy to get your head around. And once you've got that, it can help you leaps and bounds with doing all the interaction that you require, especially in a first person game. So what we need to begin with is we need a first person controller. You can import that from the standard assets and you can either get that from the asset store if you don't already have it or right click in the project and click import package and characters. And once you're there, you can drag the prefab into the scene. I've just got an object over here, which I'm going to use from here. We'll create a script and then we'll have a little UI which changes color and be able to let us do something in the sort of future. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to go to game object, I'm going to go UI and what I'm going to do is add an image. It will create our canvas for us and we'll get an image. I'm going to quickly shoot to the 2D view and just press F to focus in on the actual new image that's just created. From here, what I'm going to do is set its position to zero and zero so it's going to act as our crosshair so it's directly in the center. From here what we can do is we could scale the width and height down to say five and five so it's really really small you can see that's now that's now a cube in the middle which is really tiny we can go to the source image slot and just press and find a new sort of element that we want and we'll just use the knob element and that'll just be a small circle in the middle of the screen now we can rename that image to crosshair and that's all it is for now and if we go back say to the game view you can see it just there very much in the center and that acts as our crosshair because it's 100% um, centralized then it's perfectly to say where the ray would actually come from from the camera now if we go back into our scene view and go back to 3d we can f select on our fps controller and focus back in on it and start by writing the actual raycast script that we're going to be able to do so we'll right click in the project panel create and we'll choose a sheet C sharp script and then we'll just call this Raycast and now what we can do is when we've opened up in Visual Studio We can just get rid of the two starting methods that which we um, Don't really need to use for now and we want to start off by writing some of the variables that we, we require So when we get a raycast and we sort of try and look for an object that we might want to interact with We're gonna need to maybe find that object and use that later on require a sort of length of which we want to send the raycast out and also maybe do a layer mask so then we can only specifically find objects that we want to interact with rather than interacting with walls and things that also have colliders on it it'll just get confusing otherwise so what you can do is write private and you we can set this as a game object with two uppercases and then we're going to class this as raycasted object with a semicolon so this is going to be the object that we'll find and then we can potentially do something with when you decide to do some functionality within your game so then below here what we're going to do is we'll write two square brackets write serialized field and we'll have private integer and then we'll have this as ray length and maybe set it equal to 10 at this very moment and i have it as a private just because we don't need to access it anywhere else other than this script for now so i can leave the serialized field so i can view it in the inspector if we need to change it in the future and then what we can do is we're going to have another square bracket serialized field below and have private layer mask as have this as layer mask interact with a semicolon and what this allows us to do is create a layer mask specifically for the layer that we'll specify. So we'll make a layer called interact and then we'll specify that on the objects that we want to use, which will allow us just to do the raycast on specific objects like I was mentioning before. So now we want to access the sort of UI components. So we want to go to the top underneath the using Unity engine and say using Unity engine.ui, add a semicolon there. And then below this two serialized fields, what we'll do is we'll have another square brackets serialized field and have a private image and image is part of the UI system as you can see from the little pop-up that displays and we need to have this reference at the top to be able to access it. And then we'll just have this as UI crosshair. 
and we can save that out for now. So now we're going to, when we choose to change the crosshair, we're going to actually change the sort of color on the image value. So we'll do that a little bit later on. Below these variables that we've just created, we'll want to do this in the an update method because we want to check at any point when we've interact, if we're going to interact with something, we need to be checking all the time to see if something in front of us is the item that we require. So in the update, in the two curly brackets, so we can write raycast hit with two capitals and then have this as hit and this is just going to be a sort of local reference to sort of the raycast that we're going to have and the green squiggle just means that we've declared it but we haven't used it yet so we'll come on to that very shortly and then what we're going to do is write vector 3 forward and this is another local reference and then we'll say equals transform with a lowercase dot transform direction which is two uppercases then in brackets we'll say vector 3 dot forward and then at the end of there we'll add a semicolon so what we're specifying is we're saying that vector3 uh, forward and our local variable is called fwd equals the um, transform direction and it's going to be directly forward from the camera that we all the origin point that we specify then underneath here we'll say that if physics and this is going to be a capital dot raycast with a capital open brackets transform with a lowercase dot position comma fwd for the forward direction that we wanted and then have a comma out hit with a comma of ray length comma layer mask interact dot value and what we need to do is we need to close that up with a second bracket and then what we'll do is we'll add two curly brackets below there just to sort of encapsulate and so what this is saying is that we can do a physics raycast from our current position where we are we're going to go forward in vector 3 forward we're going to look for this see if there's a raycast hit with a length of 10 and then we're also going to look for the actual layer that we're going to specify and now we need to say that so as we're sending the ray out we want to say that if we hit a specific tag we want to then you know, try and do something so then what we can say is that if and then in brackets we'll say the hit dot collider dot compare tag in brackets in quotes and then we can say something like object as just an example of what we could have as a tag and then we'll have we'll have two curly brackets underneath there and say that raycasted object equals hit dot collider dot game object with a semicolon so what again what we're saying is that we'll send the ray out we'll look for we'll look for the tag of object if we've hit an object with tag we're just going to fill this private variable which is going to be looking for a game object that might live in the world and we're just going to fill that automatically and what this allows us to do is if we fill this automatically with what we've found is it'll allow us to do interaction on many different objects if they've got the same tag whereas if we hard coded in each tag is going to be a different object you might have a thousand lines doing something which you could do in just this one so we could have everything that's got object on have a script which we access and then it could do something different inside that script so it allows us to be very flexible in what we do then what we want to do is we're going to then want to potentially here is change the crosshair we'll do that in a moment and i'll just put the comment there so we can see and then let's say for instance we can in here we can say that if input dot get key down in brackets then we could say the e in quotes then we can say in this in these quotes here we can say debug dot log i have interacted with an object just so that you can see this working now you i said that we wanted to change the crosshair now what we could also do here is for instance if we wanted to sort of pick things up or do an interaction like that we could then say that raycasted object dot set active is false after we've pressed the e button so we could collect an object and then instantly make it disappear because because we've automatically filled um the the variable up here with the object that we found with the raycast we don't need to specify what object it is because it'll do it automatically for us and we can just say ah because you've already found that when we press e we can just get rid of it because we've technically picked it up now what you can do here is then at the almost the very end underneath the last brace we've got going down here you can see that this um curly bracket here corresponds to this curly bracket in the if statement which is the actual breakcast that we create we want to actually have a line break here write else 
and then we can add two curly brackets below there and we can say that we might want to set the crosshair to normal here because if we're not looking at anything we can just set the crosshair back to you know not being interactable because we want to interact with stuff and make the crosshair change if we found something then if not we don't need to be able to do anything with the crosshair we just want to set it back to its normal value just before the very end of this script what we can do is we can write just between the two final curly brackets where we can write void crosshair active with two brackets then two curly brackets below and what I'll do is I will copy these two and just paste in again and have this as crosshair normal just as two different examples and then we can have we can paste crosshair active up into the change crosshair slot and reference this function by just writing the crosshair active two brackets and a semicolon and then we also want to within the else statement we want to say that we want to set it back to normal so we can just write crosshair normal two brackets and a semicolon which allows us to call the script and all we're going to do from here is literally change the ui crosshairs color so what we can do is we can say ui crosshair dot color equals and then we can say specify a solid color like red so we can say that when it's active, it's going to be red. And then we can also say cross UI crosshair dot color equals color dot white with a semicolon, which then will allow it to be set white again. Now, because it's an update function, it's done all of the time. If it's not looking at an object, it will be always trying to set the color to white all of the time, maybe, um, you know, 30 times every second if you've got 30 FPS. So it will be beneficial to just write a little Boolean statement in. So once it's done it once, it doesn't have to do it again. But I'll leave that to you if you choose to do that. Now what we can do is we can save this out and go back into Unity. So on your FPS controller, you want to go to your first person character or your main camera that you've got and you want to add Raycast to there. Now from here, what you can choose to do is you can look at your layer mask and in, uh, interact and you'll say you'll get a list of your layers that you've got currently available. You can see that you've got a UI crosshair slot. So what we can do is we can add our crosshair UI to that slot there. We can go up to the top here and where it says layer and we can add a new layer. And what we can do within our layers is we can find user layer 8 if we haven't added any already and we can just type in interact so then we can go back onto that camera and we can just choose the layer that we're going to look for is interact so you can now say that the ray length is 10 we've got interact and we'll look we've already specified the crosshair now if we go to an object that we might want to interact with say like this barrel i've got here you can see that this barrel you're going to need a collider on each of the objects that you've got. Now this object has a mesh collider. I don't really need to give it a mesh collider. So what we can just do is we can give it a box collider, for instance, and it'll do pretty much the same job, but be more optimized than a mesh collider. Now, because we're there, we've got the collider, which is required. We want to be able to give it that tag that we were specified to an object that was really important. So we can click on the plus to add a new tag. And then what we can do is we can just call this object and you want to give that a better name if you know you choose to do it in a sort of gameplay setting but now we can set our tag to object and then we're going to set this object's layer to interact and do you want to change the children that just means because this is a parent we don't want to change the children because we only want to affect and give the layer or the tag to the object which has the collider and we can say no this object only and then i can press save and what I can do is, seeing as though that the Raycast is on the camera, it's going to come directly from the middle of the actual screen. We'll press play and you can see that, you can see my white cursor is just below where my yellow interaction is. And you can see that I can look around and nothing's happening. When I go move towards my um, actual barrel, and I look at it, you can see that it's turned to red at this point. And if I press E, you can see that that disappeared just as we expected it to. And in the console, you can see I have interacted with an object. And if I just show you that again, you can see that I will look around, do whatever. I can look at that object. You can see the cursor turned to red. If I look away, it goes white again. I can press E and I'm not doing anything. As soon as I look at this object and it has to make sure that it has a collider, I can press E and it's gone again. And you can see that we got that debug line again so again just a quick glance we have um, a private variable which has the raycasted object we do a length and specify a variable for the layer 
that we're going to do. We're going to look for the UI crosshair. So in the update function, we're going to just actually set a couple of local variables just to have the raycast hit and the vector three, which is going to be in a forward direction. We're going to start by doing a raycast from our position forward with a particular length and looking for the layer. If we hit a object with the tag of object, you can specify as you, is required. You're going to then fill our raycasted object with whatever we found. So raycasted object will, if you make that um, a serialized field, you will see that raycasted object in the inspector would fill with whatever the name of our object is that it was barrel not for. It would do that. And then we set the crosshair to, crosshair to active because we can see an object in front of us. Then only when that's happened can we then press E and we'll debug a line where we'll, she'll say I've interacted with an object and set the object to false so it looks like it disappears so you might have picked it up. You can do anything else in here that you require. You could say raycasted objects and you could get a component on that object like a script which exists on it and do some functionality there. And then in our else statement if we're not finding an object with a raycast, if we haven't found something, we're just going to be a normal crosshair, so we're not going to be doing anything. So then we have the two methods, which for active and normal, we change it from red to white. And like I said, so it doesn't, if you put a debug line in, say this one here, it would be running it all of the time. If you add a little boolean to check whether you've already set it to white and you're not finding anything, then you know, you'd save yourself some sort of a little bit of base optimization there. But this is just a very simple way to create yourself a basic raycast and help you just start interacting with objects. So I hope this helps you out and gave you an insight into doing a raycast. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.